I informed you that once you become a sales master, you can gradually achieve success. Thus, I will explain how you can do this by sharing with you the eight steps to success. Now, the first thing you have to do is set your goals or objectives. For goal setting, we use a management process known as MBO, which stands for Management by Objectives. As such, our goal is achieving what we call a balanced life. After you set a goal for yourself, the second step is to become determined, which means you need to have a firm mind. Our motto, follow the faith, refers to having this unshakable resolve. In terms of determination, the first important factor is living a self driven life. After listening to the lectures, you might think, I really should do the atomy business. I am very fortunate to have learned about atomy. I really want to give this business a try because I want to live happily with my family in the home that we want. Buy my husband a nice new car so that he won't become embarrassed when he meets his friends and allow my children to whatever they wish. Let's say you went home with this determination and told your husband, Honey, I'm going to buy you a new car. Then suddenly he starts asking questions like, Did you hit your head while you were coming back? Where exactly did you get that idea? And were you blinded and believed everything you heard? Even after being showered with these questions, you need to be unswayed by this and resist giving up. When you're in this situation, essentially, you can't have someone else control your life. Instead, you need to take your thoughts and lead the people around you. You have to take charge of your surroundings. And that means you need to have a strong resolve. Are you determined? Will you take control of your surroundings? Good, because that's what you need to do. The second factor is to have positive thoughts. When I talk about positive thoughts, we are not arguing that an impossible thing will happen. Actually, we all have what is necessary to become successful and wealthy. Thus, as long as you are able to exhibit the abilities you possess, you can achieve the level of success that you want. Because we were created to make it happen. Since you are here learning about the atomy business, all you have to do is tell the people around you things like, well, let's do the atomy business. Why not come to the seminar with me? Try this great low price shampoo. And have you tried this toothpaste? Once you tell people the toothpaste will sell because it is great and low priced, the only reason why it wouldn't sell is because you didn't say anything. Will you succeed if you talk? Yes, you will. The third thing you need to keep in mind is that you will have to pay a price. If a farmer decides to harvest 10 bags of rice, will the farmer have to pay a price? To harvest the 10 bags of rice he wants by planting the rice seeds, weeding the fields, and harvesting the crops every fall? Of course he will. No farmer would picture the 10 bags of rice in his head, then just idle around by doing nothing and hope to have the 10 bags of rice appear in his storage. You must be determined to pay the price in order to achieve the success that you want. When you go around telling people about this business, there will be those who will tell you not to do this. Not everyone will buy our products. Even if someone rejects you, you need to just move forward and talk to the next person. As you continually talk to others, people who you least expect will buy from you as well. That person could also introduce the product to others. There are 
instances where you might be explaining the business, but due to your stammering, they might ask, "Do you have some materials or catalogs I can see?" Or can someone else explain it better? Or even, can you just give me the web address? I'll look into it myself. After a while, they will call you back and say, "What I found was surprising." What do I need to do if I want to do this business? The person could even do the research and think. I surfed the web regarding him or him, and was stunned by all the theses written by K A E R I. This is something that everyone should take. It will become a sensation in the functional supplement industry because it not only helps awaken your immunoscience, but it has also functional components that has been individually approved by M F D S. This isn't something that happens easily. Nor is this just any ordinary product. So, how can I get this product? As such, it is possible that someone smarter than you can become a partner in your downline. Therefore, as long as you are able to pay the price, you will be able to see the results that follow. Hence, you need to be determined to pay the price. Once you have this determination. The third step is to begin the actual business itself, and you do this by making a list of people. Who do you want to introduce the business and products to? You will be writing up a list. Now, when you are creating this consumer list, instead of writing the names of people who might do this business. You will be writing the names of people you know. Why do you think you would be creating a list like this? Well, it is to do something called the law of own mind. The majority of people say that they don't know anybody because they only think about people who might do this business. However, you need to write down people you know and tell them what you do by saying. I started selling cosmetics and detergents, so why not buy those products from me? I also have functional health supplements and toothpaste. Thus, you are promoting your business by telling them to buy from you. All you need to do is tell them. But instead of doing that, you worry about whether or not they will buy it on their own and have a prejudice about it. The word prejudice is a legal term. For example, let's say a judge thinks a person looks like a thief. If he has this prejudice while listening to the prosecutor or lawyer, the defendant will inevitably receive a verdict for a serious crime. Thus, if you make a conclusion based on your prejudice, it will seem like the lawyer is only defending the person to make money. Therefore, you must not make a conclusion based on prejudice. Which is why you don't write down names of people who might do the business, and only list the people you know. Then, how many people do we generally know? On average, almost everyone knows about 250 people. So, where does this 250 come from? Well, the number of people who attend a wedding is at least 250 people. Are those who attend your wedding people you know or not? They are all people you know. Even if you don't know them directly, people next to this person might say that this person is so and so. You might not have seen them often, but they tend to be within one degree of separation after introduction. Hence, we say that everyone knows at least 250 people. You might start organizing by people you know from your hometown and your friends from schools. You can add people who live in your current neighborhood, those you know from your social groups. And others from your previous place of employment. For those who went to the military, can add their military friends. When you write everyone you think you know, your list will have the names of at least 250 people. Whether or not you succeed in the business is dependent on how fast you can inform these people. Out of these 250 people, 
there will be those who won't have any interest, those who will just buy the products, and those who will want to join the business. Some people will be looking for some work to do, but they might be too old to find a job. Others might want to start something but won't have any capital. There are even those who lack the necessary skills to do a job as well. Everyone will need to live somehow, but there are actually a lot of people around us who need work but lack this and that. For you to be able to suggest such a business opportunity is one of the best things to do for them. You don't need any skills, talents, or capital for this business. Since you aren't investing anything, even if you were to fail, you have nothing to lose. As long as they are willing to work and have the determination to be successful, all you have to do is quickly let people know about a business opportunity where anyone can achieve success, similar to how important the speed at which you inform others is. One of the founding principles of Atomy focuses on the concept of speed. There are actually a lot of management concepts that include this concept and call it speed management. So, what exactly is this concept of speed in business administration? Let's say there are two pipes labeled A and B. Both has water flowing through them, but which one will have more water flow? Generally, most people will say that it is pipe B. Now, if you add the concept of speed, the situation could be different. Let's say that pipe A is spewing out water, while it only drizzles out of pipe B. Which will have more water flowing out this time? In this case, more water will come out of pipe A. For business administration, the concept of speed can be seen. If the diameter of this pipe is capital spending, then raising productivity for a small investment will require the concept of speed, which is the basis of speed management and other management based on time. For example, if you drank a cup of coffee, they would calculate the cost of coffee and how much the downtime costs in terms of labor expenses to see which was more expensive. If it costs a few cents per second, they would use the management concepts to analyze the speed. The concept of speed at Atomy also needs to include the notion of time. Just like how I used it in the example. Then the question becomes, what is time? Can you tell me what time is? Some people will give answers like, time is money. But when time passes, money just doesn't suddenly appear in your pockets. So how do you define the concept of time? Time is actually just a chain of events or a sequential arrangement of occurrences. Basically, it is to recognize what happened before or after. Hence, the concept of time can be seen as an event. As such, if you actually want to manage your life well, you need to be good at time management. If you want to manage your time and life well, you ultimately need to handle these events. Thus, you need to take the lead for the types of occurrences that you want to happen around you. Then, why would doing this business be work that is very important? Well, the work is very valuable because not only will your beloved family become happier, but those around you will also become successful. We are doing valuable work by creating precious moments. 
In terms of these 250 people, we create moments for them by informing them about the business. Some people will take three months to inform all 250 people. There are others who might tell 10 people a day. Which means that within a month, or more precisely 25 days, they would be able to speak with 250 people. In this scenario, has the time been compressed or not? It has been shortened because it went from three months to one, right? In actuality, this isn't time compression, but rather increased the frequency of the occurrences. There are also some who finished this in 10 days. These people would inform 25 people per day for 10 days and finish creating the events of notification for all 250 people. When this happens, there is a very explosive effect because you are able to compress or shorten the time. If you just let water, air or oil sit around, nothing happens because they don't do anything. Yet, if you compress something like air, what do you think will happen? Well, unlike normal air, compressed air has the power to run equipment, move pumps and allow movement for sliding rods. Similarly, if you compress oil and use it in a hydraulic pump, the hydraulic equipment will take the oil and use it to create more than enough power to lift heavy objects that can weigh several hundred tons. Hence, if you want to exhibit similar strength, you can't let the happenings in your life just occur on their own, time after time. Instead of letting it proceed in this manner, you have to plan out the events you want and then make them all happen during a concentrated period. This is what you must do to succeed. Thus, since time it's seen as a series of events, compression of events essentially means a compression of time. We call this process time compression, which which is using time when it has been compressed. Since the third step was making a list, the next step would be making calls. The goal of these calls is not to explain the business to others over the phone. Your objectives are to send out invitations and create appointments. When you are sending out invitations, it is very important that you continuously call a specific number of people every day. There are a lot of people who think that going to the centre is actually like going to work. Some would go to the centre and just chat away all day. Then they go home when it's time to make dinner. Yet, those who do this don't call or meet that many people throughout the day. And so they only meet or call a few people a month. They just go to the centre as if they are working. But sitting down and chatting all day is not working. You're only working when you spend time calling and meeting people, consulting others or receiving training. Everyone needs to be able to simply and accurately calculate the time that you spent doing actual work. If you could earn at least $20,000 a month by working day and night for two to three years, should you do it? If there are people who do this and make this much, why can't you? Well, since you don't truly believe that you will live in the house you envisioned and make the money that you want, the image in your mind is vague and keeps you from trying. You can't reach it because you don't try. Once you start trying, you will surpass your expectations. Because of a concept called the principle of multiplication. Our brains think in terms of addition and can't do multiplication well. 
One time, Royal Master Jong Soo Park said to me, "Mr. Park, I'm afraid of receiving money." I asked her why. She was receiving almost ten thousand dollars a week. All she wanted to do was update her bank book, but it kept printing. She hadn't updated it because she was talking to a few people, but it kept printing. Her heart was pounding as she was thinking, "Do I deserve ten thousand dollars a week for the work that I did? How was I able to make such a big amount of money?" There was a time when I made that amount as well, and it feels like the company sent the wrong amount of pay to you. You get the feeling the company will take it back soon, so you cash it out quickly and sometimes transfer it to another bank account. This is the kind of phenomenon that occurs. Who would have thought that you would be able to find something that lets you earn thirty thousand to fifty thousand a month in three years? Although it might have seemed vague, since you believed and worked towards it, it seems shocking because that belief became a reality. It is best not to work with people who are always relaxed. If you wanted to boil water, it has to be one hundred degrees Celsius. If the temperature fluctuated, where it was fifty degrees, sixty degrees, ninety degrees, eighty degrees, seventy degrees, and so on, do you think the water will boil? It's similar to having energy when you bring four people losing steam, then three of the four don't want to do it. Becoming determined again after going to the seminar, continuing to do it for making commission on a few people, and becoming tired due to people not listening to you at all. This is why you can't lead those around you. Just like the water, you need to get over one hundred degrees to start boiling. If you want to burn the firewood next to you, you first need to be burning ferociously. It won't catch on fire unless you are blazing. You need to have the desire to succeed. There is only one reason why some people don't have that burning passion, and that is because their love has cooled. You need to truly wish for your spouse's happiness, and do whatever you can to make it happen by living well. After calling and inviting others in step four, the fifth step is explaining the business. The first part of this step is to talk about the company and the concepts that it is founded upon. So, what type of company is Atomy? Well, we take the products that were developed by K A E R I and manufactured by Korea Colma. Which has 100 years of history, and sell them at a very low price, following our policy of mastige. The fact that Atomy is a company that takes prestigious products and sells it at a price that masses can afford has to be organized in your mind. After that, you need to explain about the products. You can organize the information regarding the products we supply, like our cosmetic products, toothpaste, and hemohim. By writing down and memorizing a few lines of explanation, so that you can explain each product within a minute, since it can be confusing to explain it off the top of your head, it is best to at least write it down once. Don't make it complicated. The more simple it is, the easier it is to explain. This, in turn, makes it easier to understand. It is best to organize the product information in this manner. The next factor that would fall under this category would be the compensation plan or income structure explanation. The last item you need to explain is the company vision. The vision of the company is to sweep not only the Korean distribution industry but also become a company that will enter and sweep 
the global distribution market by going into countries like the US, Japan, Canada, Mexico, and China. This is possible because Atomy is selling great products at low prices. That is the vision of Atomy. Next would be the sixth step. After giving the explanation about the business, you would need to do a follow up and then follow through. For a follow up, you would usually call the person by phone. And check up on them within 48 hours. Let's say you sold a certain product. The consumers could have a small complaint or a misunderstanding about the product you sold. Normally, in these circumstances, it can be resolved by responding to them. Since the Atomy products are not easily recognized like other brands, Many people will be unfamiliar with the products and have strange ideas before their use. As such, it is necessary to quickly call the consumers and clear up any misunderstandings that they may have. This can be regarding the product or the company. You might have a member who filled out a form to do the business, but left this member alone and only thought about how big your line would be. After not hearing anything for a week, you gave her a call. She tells you, I just had an argument with my husband. He said he would leave me if I did this. So I am just crying at home. Thus, if you leave people alone like this, they lose focus and it becomes harder to bring them back. Yet, if you called within 48 hours and she tells you that she is upset after arguing with her husband, you are able to talk it out and help her through it. When you call a week or 10 days later, she would have already decided to not do it and give up. When people want to do this but get distressed, you can console and coach her at that time by saying, Hey, how much is needed for your husband's retirement? You need to take measures for it, right? Then... Ask your husband if he can show you what steps he's been taking to prepare for retirement. Why not try and explain it to him again, that you want to do this business for that reason? If she talks to her husband about it, her husband will see how bleak their future is. She might later tell you, I told my husband, and he told me to do it if I wanted. Then you can be assured and help her with the business. Hence, it is important to follow up by checking on them again within 48 hours. Then what about follow through? Well, once you recruited someone, you need to make sure to help them until they are successful. Now, most people will leave their partner be once they start buying some products. When the partner looks like they are doing the business, these people will focus on their smaller leg and not pay attention, which causes nothing to go right. You shouldn't distinguish between the smaller and larger leg. Instead of focusing on your success, you need to be in the mindset of trying to help the partners you recruited become successful. So after you recruit a partner, you need to follow through by taking care of them until they are able to become successful. After that is the seventh step, which is consulting. Another word for this would be counseling. So, what do you counsel about? Well, you would consult others regarding their problems. While you do this business, what kind of problems will there be? The first case would be not knowing enough people. Many people will say this because I heard it from people as well. They asked me to introduce people to them. Those who say that they don't have anyone are usually the people who didn't make a list, 
who should be on the list instead of those who might do the business. You need to write the names of people you know, which should be around 250. Therefore, for people who say they don't know anyone, you should counsel them by asking, Who is the first person that comes to your mind? Out of all the people who succeeded or you want to succeed, or even love, who do you feel sad for the most? Who do you think will do well in this business? If you ask questions like these, will they answer you or not? One person might say, John Doe, and so you would write it down. You ask for the person's phone number and write it down as well. You continue by asking questions like, How old is this person? What is his personality? How did they live before? And what was their previous job? They will usually know the answers. Once all this is done and they are about to leave, you ask them, Is it better to explain the product, company, or income structure first? What's more important to them, the product or the income? They might answer, That person isn't interested in the business. As they have some money, but they might buy and use the products. Then you tell them to explain about the products. You could also say, He seems to be having a hard time looking for a job. So instead of talking about the products, why not explain to him about the income? Since that is what he will be more interested in. You can continue with, Shall I go with you? Or do you want to talk to him by yourself first? Is it better for you to go to him? Or do you think you should invite him? As you continue to discuss with your partners, they will give you the answers in a calm and orderly fashion. With each person, you should make a personal log file, which is known as your counseling journal. You would use this to help manage your partner's network in a detailed and orderly fashion. Each time you consult your partner, you can update the log. Thus, If someone in your downline doesn't know anyone, you ask your partner about the people around them, and then you would counsel each and every one of those people. From there, you would start digging into your partner's surrounding network. Repeat after me digging into the surrounding networks. You excavate the connections in your partner's surroundings. When people ask their sponsors to pass someone down, the sponsor already has either already made them into downlines or they do not have any more people to send down. They have no reason not to when doing this business. Thus, there is no point in asking for people because there is a limit to how many they can send down. Yet, When you start digging into a partner's network, you can find people and dig into their networks in order to find more people, and so on and so forth. You will be able to continuously find more and more people in this manner. If you write down their names on simple cards or notes, you will be able to maintain a record and constantly dig out more people in these connections. In some cases, your partner might have people, but they won't join. Usually, this is because the partner can't see the vision, or because they didn't explain the company vision. In another case, people might register but not have any sales. The main reason why there might be no sales is due to your partners not trying it themselves. They aren't users of the Atomy products. We tell others not only about the technical aspects of the product, but also our feelings after using it. Generally, you can't talk to others about this because you are trying to sell it with just the technical aspects. Actually, instead of doing that, you could say, Hey, I tried this cosmetic because I heard good things and it actually was fantastic. You should try it. 
You're going to be amazed. They might say, "Really? Is it that great? Let me try one." Hence, when you use the products yourselves, you will be able to share your experiences with others. It would be the same for our hemo him. Let's say you took hemo him yourself. Before taking it, your body felt heavy and tired when you woke up. Yet after taking it, you aren't tired anymore. Even if you slept fewer hours and your body feels lighter, since hemo him helps with your immunity, you don't catch as many colds as you used to, and so you think, I should continuously take this functional health supplement. If you have this kind of reaction for the product, then how are you going to tell others about it? You can express your feelings with, "You should really try this great product." You will be able to tell others about the product with that statement. However, if you took out a box of Hemohim and tried to explain it, they won't know whether it is a good product or not. Since you aren't conveying your feelings regarding the product, people are not able to quickly make a decision about it. Thus, it is best to talk about the features and sell the effects. Ultimately, people are buying the effects of the product, since you express your feelings about how great the product is. As such, you need to try and use the products on a continuous basis if you want the sales to go up. Now. Some partners can register people, and get sales, but their organization won't grow. And there are two reasons why this happens. The first reason is due to not bringing the people to the system, so they are doing the business alone and not bringing people to the seminars. If you want your organization to grow, you need to attend the seminars. I'll explain this concept with an example. Let's say you have a magnet. If you place a nail here and the magnet is strong, a lot of nails will stick to it at the top, and some will fall off at the bottom. If the magnet is weak, only a few will stick to it. If you think of the magnet's strength as a person's ability, a talented person would achieve success, while a person who had no talent would become unsuccessful. However. Even all the people who have no talent can become successful if they use the system. If you picture this chalkboard as a magnet, you would stick to it like this, which means you want to use the products because it is great and low priced. You're here, right? Well, you would tell the people around you who need to become successful about this business. You would then bring them to the seminar. One of those who came might think, "I should use these great products and tell others about them." That person would get more people to come to the seminar. More people will come to the seminar and stick to the board. Instead of bringing these people to you, all they do is invite them to the seminar. People in your downlines would bring people. By doing so, all these people would be stuck to the board and sitting in the seminars. Everyone would be clinging to the seminar. Since everyone is connected with the computer system, what will happen to your commission if they attend the seminar? Your compensation would increase due to the system. Thus, even if you are a weak magnet, as long as you are able to stick to the system on your own, use the products, and tell others how great and low price they are, and continuously tell a few people about how they should do this business. It doesn't matter if you don't have the ability to manage a big organization, or do the skill to do detailed calculations, or the ability to deliver the goods, or even the know-how to manage the computer system. If you become a user, become a person who continuously tells others and sticks with the system, the partners in your downlines will do the same. Even if all the people with no talent stick together. This system will allow everyone to become successful. As such, the organization will grow if people participate in the system. The other reason why the organization doesn't grow is because the partner is so narrow-minded that the person keeps driving others away. 
although they don't realize it, when we see these people, we think they would succeed if they didn't do anything. However, they just keep pushing people away. The size of this business is dependent on the size of your heart. If you are a narrow minded person, your organization will not be able to grow. Then, why are these people like this? Well, people see them that way because they show off. The Atomy business is about taking care of others with humility. The center head shouldn't be sitting on a nice chair and ruling the center. The center head and the sponsors should be doing their best to serve and help the people who stop by. When I tell people this, there are some who tell on their sponsors and tell me, My center head doesn't serve others. Well, instead of worrying about what your center head does, You can make up for them by serving others twice as hard. You need to think about what you're doing. You have to serve the people around you rather than being too proud. The business of network marketing is about making money and not about finding fame. The business isn't about your position or status. Yet, there are some who want to be in a position of status. Some of these people try to get promoted by doing betting. And that is not a smart move. If you want to earn money, you need to make a consumer group because without them, you won't be able to have sales this month, the next month, and the month after that. Yet these people will swipe their cards to raise the sales for one month in order to write Sharon Rose Master on their business card. Other people think, if you can do it, so can I. So, some people who aren't even sales masters become Sharon Rose Master as well. People who are like this are considered narrow minded. The cause of this narrow mindedness is because everyone else seems to be in a higher position than yourself. However, you need to bring yourself down. You have to serve others from a lower plane. I am standing on top of this stage so everyone can see me, but I am working hard to serve all of you. Most CEOs and presidents don't talk hours like this with a microphone. Instead, use a script to make a script like, To all the beloved members of Atomy. Using this kind of voice, they would continue with, I greet all of you with the hopes that your lives are filled with happiness. The ending before walking off would be, From your president, Han Gil Park. I am on this stage and speaking to all of you. Because people around me said, I think you do it the best. You build trust when the owner takes the microphone. You're better than most, so you should do it. I answer, Really? Okay, then I will do it myself. That is why I am up here and putting all my energy into these lectures. This is the way you need to serve others. Now, when people get to a certain status, they won't do this like our royal masters. I think they are being a little prideful. I wanted to turn it over to them a little bit at a time, but I think it is important to see it through until the end. Anyway, we must change the narrow minded people who only wish to be higher than everyone else. Don't try to boast your pride. Throw that concept of pride out the window. When you meet someone prideful, is the atmosphere comfortable? Right, it's very uncomfortable. Because when someone says something, that person would become defensive with pride, especially women, as I think there is a strong desire for fame by many. If something is said, there always seems to be a very strong competitive spirit. I'm not saying that men aren't like this either. But you need to swallow that pride. At the centers, you need to become the person who does the unpleasant tasks and take care of others. Even in the Bible, it states that. A man's pride will bring him low. But the humble in spirit will retain honor. When you see people around you picking up litter, doing odd jobs, and helping others, do you say, call them overachievers and ignore them? No. Most people would respect and admire them by saying, wow, that person is really incredible. We actually praise these types of people. Thus, we need to lower ourselves like them. 
It might be best to be almost flat on the ground and not worrying about whether people will walk on you or not. You need to think, as long as you become happier, I'm okay with you stepping over me and I'm willing to be laying down on the ground. You also need to be willing to suffer losses. You will be less likely to be hurt if you are able to suffer losses. People are hurt because they experience misfortune. People who believe they won't suffer because they are smart tend to be wicked. If they are around, it becomes uncomfortable. Be a person who suffers losses. If only the people around you suffered, it would be easy for you, right? If all the people around you were willing to endure the hardships for you, you would be able to not only afford but want to become them as well. Hence, you should just suffer the losses to begin with. And you need to live life with this concept in mind. In terms of purchasing products, you will need to live with the fact that 10% to 20% of all sales are purchasing mistakes. If you had to research the entire market just to find the best quality product at the lowest price before making a purchase, it would be hard, right? Thus, you might make a mistake by buying the wrong items or purchasing one thing when you should have gotten a different product. If you already know, you will suffer some loss because people can buy the wrong product 10 to 20% of the time, it will become easier for you in the long run. Let's say you bought the wrong clothes. It would be easier for you if you already think it is possible to make a bad purchase once in a while. Yet, if you are frustrated and annoyed with the wrongful purchase, the person who would be suffering the most is you. As such, it is important for you to familiarize yourself with the idea of loss. Once you change the narrow-minded people, will your group grow? Of course it will. When Everyone suffers losses. It is possible to make profit. Don't try to compete with your partners. Smart people will nitpick and say something like, in this case, it's like this and it's like that in another case, right? Do you recognize your mistakes in this situation? Once they snap at the other person like this, most people won't say anything, nod their head to say yes and then not show up next time which becomes a problem. You might win the argument, but you would be losing a partner. So who lost in the bigger picture? The smarter person lost, right? There's no point in trying to win. Even if what they say is wrong or unreasonable, and you know you can win, just lose and move on, because that person will be happy about winning and continue to do the business to raise sales. When all is said and done, who actually wins in the end? You do because you will be able to achieve success. You need to have an open mind and heart. Don't try to always compete and beat your partners. Be able to take the loss. After all this, the eighth and last step in the eight steps of success is duplication. Although duplication and copy are synonyms, the underlying concept is slightly different. An example of duplication would be the cloning of Dolly the sheep and not just copying something. Then what is the difference between duplication and copying? I'll use an easy example to help you understand. Let's say we have a large tree. If you made the same tree using plastic, the plastic tree would be a copy. If you wanted to duplicate this tree, you would take a seed from this tree and plant it into the ground. After some time, the seed will sprout leaves and eventually grow into the size of the first tree. The process of duplication is similar to the second method. Most people mistake copying for duplication because people want to copy what their royal master sponsor does. They want to be like their royal master sponsor by thinking, if I had an Audi like my sponsor, I bet I could recruit a lot of people. Or, if I had $40,000 a month, I could go around taking people to fancy restaurants, driving a nice car, wear luxurious clothes, spend all that money on expenses and recruit so many people. 
These people tend to be in debt, so don't follow in their footsteps. For duplication, instead of getting the Audi, you would follow what Crown Master Chong Su Park did when she first started. She didn't buy the car in the beginning because she didn't have any money. She didn't know anything regarding the business or organization either. So I told her to look at the retail margin and sell diligently. She began to go around selling the best she could. When everyone else was a diamond, she just barely became a sales master and wasn't able to go past this mastership for some time. Eventually, she was late with her promotions and everything else. She continued working hard for about a year and a half. One day, I asked her, "Are you just going to follow what I told you to do, word for word?" I started telling her other things she should do. I told her, "You should make a group and manage it. Bring some consumers to the seminar so that some of them can switch and become a contractor." She replies, "What? Why didn't you tell me earlier?" After that talk. She started bringing people to the seminars and making them her partners. Since she had gone around selling products when I told her to, when her consumers who had bought from her before became members to buy the low-priced goods and decided to join the business, she had more partners than those who were just looking for contractors. Even though she became a Sharon Rose and Star Master later than most. She was the first person to become a royal master. Since she already had a base of consumers who were part of her consumer group, she was able to become a royal master at an alarming pace. Thus, if you want to become a royal master, what should you do? You would need to diligently find consumers by selling one or two products and going to everyone you know and getting them to use all the products that you are selling. If you go out and continually find consumers with this in mind, it is easier to get 100 consumers than making one person into a contractor. That one contractor might just buy the products once and not use it for some time. However, the consumers will buy shampoo as soon as they run out. They can't live without any toothpaste either. You will be able to quickly find 100, 200, or even 300 consumers. Because people will tell and inform others about these products, when all these consumers buy the toothpaste when they need it, all the PVs and compensations will maintain your sales mastership, and you would be someone who earns two thousand to four thousand dollars a month. When you make two thousand to four thousand dollars a month, your downlines will see you and want to also become a sales master and start diligently finding consumers, which will automatically make you a diamond master who makes four thousand to ten thousand dollars a month. There are the basic principles when doing business. Please remember that duplication is not the same as copying, which is trying to mimic the people who are doing well. Instead, duplication is following in the footsteps of what these successful people did three years ago. In duplication, it is important to become a good original copy. Duplication will only be successful. If you are a well-made original source, if you think my partners will be in big trouble if they are like me, then that means something is wrong, right? Yet, if you think I hope my partners will all be like me, I hope they continually use the products, sell the products, and invite people to the seminars like I have. Then you will be successful. When you look at yourself and think, "If my partners are all like this and act this way, I think it will be a big problem, and we will all fail." Then what do you need to change? You need to change yourself, because you are the original source, and everything is duplicated from it. Thus, unless you change yourself, you can't change the people around you. You have now all listened to eight steps to success. Now, if you do the business following these eight steps, all of you here will be able to become a sales master. You will be able to make a consumer group, 
that buys 2.5 million PVs worth of goods in no time, with additional sales made by some of your consumers to help maintain your sales mastership. I truly wish that all of you will be able to live with hope due to atomy. I will end on that note. Thank you for listening. <laughs>